Well, all right, all right, all right. Welcome to another one about my stumps world of tanks Xbox One replays. How y'all doing? We're on Sand River. I'm in the Centurion. Uh, Joe is in his object 416. And um, this is a. Uh, yeah, you'll see Joe and I. Um, I I hate doing this. And it bugs the crap out of me. However, that being said, you will see Joe and I take off and go to the uh, HJ area line. HJK um, line. Or wherever. We'll go up to the sand hills up here. And keep in mind we're two mediums. And we have a light tank coming with us. And after that, nothing. So I'm on the mic with Joe right now, and I'm like, nothing's coming this way. And I've gotten used to, let's just say, far too many games. I will go to a port, to a point in the map, to a port, to a point in the map where I feel I should be, or that a point that needs me. You know, an area that needs someone there. But when you have Sand River, which is as open as this map is, and you have a tier 8 game, which, you know, it's not like we're really unhorribly overgunned, but no one else is even remotely coming this way. We got a couple of medium and heavy sitting in base, all the rest are going way out back. So right now I'm on the mic with Joe and I'm saying, yo, I'm not staying over here. Not gonna do it. There's far too many games have gone by that I've sat and tried to hold something and I die really quick and we take, you know, I don't know, two or three tanks down on health and then they roll back and you have a couple tanks in base that finish them off and get the kills and, you know, get the points and. Not gonna do it. If it was a choke point of a map, maybe, but with Sand River being so open on that side, no. Because they just would have come up over the hill in one spot. If there was more than three or four tanks there, they would have come over the hill. There's three there we just spotted. They would have come over the hill and swarmed us and would have been dead. So, it's not going to happen. Uh, call me a jerk for leaving the, the light tank down there. I, he should have turned around. I told him we were leaving. Told him to fall back. He should have turned around. There's no way a light tank and two mediums, one without a turret, really, is going to hold that side of the map. It's not going to happen. So, you know, sorry to the light tank, but we're just going to be, you know, play the map like the team plays out. You know, we're already down by three tanks. Well, no, we're only down by one now. So, uh, it gets a lot worse, so we end up being down by quite a few tanks here in a couple minutes. And it's just like, did we make the right move or not? Time will tell at this point in the game. But like I said, I know if I stayed on that side, Joe and I would have got overrun, we would have got killed, and we would have been out of the game. So, better to keep the gun in the game and uh, see what happens than to just, just stay on one side of the map by principle. You know, it's, it's sad that games have to play out like this. But, like I said, there's no way in heck I'm staying over there by myself. We should ammo rack the uh, ARL V39. Bet you he didn't like that, and I bet you didn't like that other 232 shot put into him. We got him. But yeah, there's just. We put one into that J Panther. We get him again. Get him again. No. But that's okay. We did enough damage to him that, uh,. See if we can get something else over here. There's a bunch of tanks lit up. I'm going to come back over here, though, because I know there's nothing really guarding this side, and we're already down by... Let's see. Two of their light tanks are dead, and let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of our tanks are dead. Heavy and three mediums. A tank destroyer and two lights. So we got to start putting some, some fire into these tanks. Um... You know, finally that heavy that was left in base, he's pulling out now. He's at F3 right now, and he's struggling along down there, but I think his game is, his days are numbered. 
Tried to get a shot on that uh, last shot on the ARL, but he uh, got out of way. Got out of the way there. The Borzik takes a shot at me, and I think my tracks ate it. I return fire into him. Sucks to be you, Borzik. Sorry, Ramalama Ding Dong. Not today. Not today, my friend. Not today. Alright, now he's occupied. Tank's going up after him, so I don't need to worry too much about him right now. And there goes a shot across the top of my turret. Now I'm assuming that guy shot at someone else, and it was just a stray shot that went flying by, but you never know, so I turn around. And we're only down by three tanks right now, so not so bad, I guess. But again, they got a couple heavies left, a couple mediums. Still have a light. There's one of their heavies. Come on, Mr. T29. Thank you. Stop right there. Put a shot into him, and he's backing up. I go for the tracking shot here. I'm aiming low, and it gets a little lower than I want it to. Um, and he doesn't back up as quick as I wanted him to. So I don't get the shot, and we'll try to sneak another one in and get a 256 there. S15, S whatever that tank is. Didn't get a good look at it. But uh, if I can't get a good look at it, I can't put a shot into it. So T34 going across there. Joe tracks him, but he repairs it, which means he doesn't have a repair kit anymore. We put one into him. Should I take another shot right here? I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Nah, screw it. But I'm pretty sure he took out our 85 that was over there. So um, that's the end of his game. He sat in base the whole time and then... Oops, that was a screw-up shot right there. I went to shoot, and as I went to shoot, for some reason my turret wiggled and completely lost focus. And of course the shot went into the ground. Don't know if I moved my tank a little bit or what the deal was, but... That was a little slightly pissy. Not that I would have definitely made the shot or anything, but would have had a lot better chance if the uh, aiming circle wasn't the size of the sun. Okay, pulling into that T29. Affirmative. 77 to finish him off. So we've brought this back from being down by, what, four or five tanks anyways, to only being down by one tank. So now would Joe and I have been on the other side? Would it have made a big difference? Yeah, because Joe and I would have been dead right now. So they, we'd only have four tanks left on our team. <laughs> Telling uh, this Ferdinand to stop. Don't go out there too far because you got tanks shooting at you. There's no sense of getting killed. And he's bound and determined to sit out there in front of a Yag tank, Yag Tiger 8.8, .8, I believe. And the 8.8 .8 finishes him off. Don't understand the mentality of some people. You get one into the back of that J Panther. Affirmative. We'll finish him off. Back my tail back up. See if we can get shots in this T-34. 210. Have to accept 210, I guess. Oh, he stops. Come on, come on, buddy. Oh, and a 242. Must have zero health left. And some more finishes off, and of course his health, health was under 10, so. It is what it is. It is World of Tanks. Mercy rolls. The last roll was a fairly decent roll, the 240-something, but the one before it at 210. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't definitely isn't a low, 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 low roll in this tank, because I've got under 200 before, so. I go to track the Fury, and of course hits his track, but doesn't track him. So that's like two or three tanks I've tried to track out in the middle and haven't been able to do it yet. He's going he's going gung-ho over our Tiger. I'm pretty sure our Tiger can handle him. And I get spotted and I have no idea where from. And there it is. Nashorn. Piece of shit. German little bastard. You got your one shot in. I hope it felt good because you know you're not going to get another shot in. All your buddies are dead. Only a couple of you left, and there's no one over here beside you, so. If I don't get it over there to get you, I know someone will. There's one shot into him. There we go. So his game's finished off.
So now what do we do? There's an artillery and that Yag Tiger 88 left. And we know where the uh, Yag Tiger is somewhere. There we go. Joe brings him up. It's just a matter of, of sneaking ourselves in around him. Throw a spray and pray over there. Thinking maybe I'll track him or something. Get some kind of damage. Maybe he'd pull forward as I shot it. But it misses. So time to go get up close and personal. Going to have some, some hug time. Alright, maybe not hug time. But I would have if I could have got close enough. Tra la 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 la. Just, you know, driving across the desert, join join the uh the critters. That yummy taste of sand in my mouth. I've gone past the centurion right here, and I'm on the seven one and uh I'm gonna keep this tank, it's a good tank. I pulled the crew out of it for the other one, but the tank itself this is a good tank, so I'm gonna sink a two twenty nine into the SP. He's gonna try to fire back at me on the move. Nice try. But that is the last shot you're going to fire in the game. And there's our Yag Tiger 88. Ooh, side shot. Not a bad shot. Get one for his engine deck. And nope. The Bulldog finishes him off. So yeah, we go from a game where we start going one way and realize that no one's going that way. So there's times where you just have to say, screw it, turn around and go the other way. Because if we had stayed on that side, we would have been dead. We would have been out of the game. And who knows how it would have ended up. But instead, we kept our guns in the game. And we ended up doing 39, uh, 3,600 damage, 19 penetrations, 3,986 XP with a multiplier, 33,000 silver, high caliber, um, second class mastery badge. Uh, I ended up in second place behind the Bulldog. Um, like I said, uh, we 3,610 for damage dealt, 1,215 for uh, base XP. Joe was down a little bit more. Uh, 1700 damage dealt. Two shots, 470 into the uh, ARL V39, took out his ammo rack. Four shots for 582 and destroyed the T29. We took one shot at the Fury and we hit his tracks but didn't track him. Bullshit. Crusade SP, two shots for 350, took him out of the game. T34. Okay, T34. T-34. Trying to magically make it. There we go. Three shots for 686. <laughs> oh, T-32. Two shots for 490. Took him out of the game. Nashorn. I spotted him. Little bastard. He got his one shot in, but he got finished off. Three shots for 585 and took the J Panther out of the game. One shot for 238 on the Ramalama Ding Dog. And one shot for 236 and 122 assist on the uh, 8-8. So overall, it wasn't a bad game. Um, the other team didn't do very well. So, you know, we only had five people over 1,000. The rest of our team did completely crap. I mean, there's only one other tank. There's only six of us over 500. So, you know, <laughs> that's just a horrible game for the team. But the other team was not much better. So, but it, like I said, our team sucked. No one went to the right from where we started. And if Joe and I had stayed over there, we would have just been casualties too. So sometimes it's better to say, you know something, screw it. I'm not going to try to do the right thing and hold the side. I'm going to go go with the lemmings. I'm going to go be an idiot and maybe I'll finish the game off and, you know, help the team win. So just because you see a flank that's wide open, if you don't have enough firepower in your platoon or whatever that you feel you can hold it, don't bother. It's some, it, Most of the time, unless it's a choke point that you can hold, it's better to go the other way and, and try to go, you know, play the numbers game. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what I did right. Tell me what we did wrong. And remember, when you're on that battlefield, don't be a douche and lemming train. Set out correctly in the map and shoot the red ones.